Paramatman Sanskrit, Paramatman IAST, Paramatman or Paramatma is the absolute Atman or Supreme Self in Vedanta and Yoga philosophies in the Hindu theology. The Paramatman is the primordial self or the self beyond who is spiritually practically identical with the Absolute, identical with the Brahman. Selflessness is the attribute of Paramatman, where all personality, individuality vanishes. Etymology <inaudible> 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 The word stem paramatma, paramatman pronounced piarma tmn, its nominative singular being paramatma, paramatma pronounced piarma tma is formed from two words, parama, meaning supreme, or highest, and atma, which means individual self. The word atman generally denotes the individual self, but by the word paramatman, which word also expresses boundless life, boundless consciousness, boundless substance in boundless space, is meant the atman of all atmans or the supreme self or the universal self. The word atman, which literally means non-darkness or light, is Brahman the subtlest indestructible divine existence. The word paramatman refers to the creator all. Topic Paramatman in Jain theology In Jainism, each Atman or individual self is a potential Paramatman or God, both are essentially the same. It remains as Atman only because of its binding karmic limitations, until such time as those limitations are removed. As Paramatman, the Atman represents the ultimate point of spiritual evolution, even though Jain mysticism centers around Atman and Paramatman because it believes in the existence of soul. In Jainism, which accepts neither Vedic authority nor monism, all enlightened souls are referred to as Paramatman and regarded as gods. Jainism honors the soul of each man as its own eternally distinct savior. Since the Paramatman of Jainism is unable to create and govern the world, there is no place of God as a creator and bestower of fortune. Topic. Paramatman in Buddhism Buddhism rejects a metaphysics of ground, such as the Paramatman. Topic. Description of Paramatman in the Upanishads The sage of the Brihadaranyaka Upanishad IV.4.2, though not using the word paramatman, explains that at the time of release the portion aspect of the paramatman and the portion aspect of the jiva presiding in the right eye become unified with the paramatman and the jiva presiding in the heart, then the jiva does not see, smell, taste, speak, hear, feel, touch and know. When paramatman goes out, the chief prana goes out after him, followed by the lower prana. Paramatman goes out riding on the jiva following consciousness and work, knowledge of former life or natural capacity. In the Prashna Upanishad IV.11 the word Atman cannot refer to jiva because the jiva cannot of its own accord throw off its body or understand avidya, therefore, it refers to Paramatman. The jiva attains moksha when he actually knows the Paramatman, the Asarira Prinatman, to be thousand-headed, to be the governor of all and to be superior to all. Thus, Paramatman is one of the many aspects of Brahman and has all attributes of Brahman. Atman spirit and Paramatman God are one, some say they are distinct as well as one, they are one with reference to Shakti but distinct with reference to that power. <laughs> Parable of the two birds The word, Paramatman, is not to be found in the Rig Veda but through allusion referring to Paramatman as Isha. This distinction is made because all of its mantras which in the form of prayers are addressed to gods. In its great riddle hymn Sukta I. is the famous mantra, RVI 164.20, that was revealed to Rishi Dirgatama Ashathya and borrowed by Mandaka Upanishad 3.1.1-3, which belongs to Atharva Veda, to weave the parable of the two birds, two birds. Two birds, beautiful of wings, close companions, cling to one common tree, of the two one eats the sweet fruit of that tree, the other eats not but watches his companion. The self is the bird that sits immersed on the common tree, but because he is not lord he is bewildered and has sorrow. But when he sees that other who is the lord and the beloved, he knows that all is his greatness and his sorrow passes away from him. 
When, a seer, he sees the golden-hued, the maker, the lord, the spirit who is the source of Brahman, then he becomes the knower and shakes from his wings sin and virtue, pure of all stains he reaches the supreme identity, translation of verses 1-3 of 3rd Mandaka Upanishad by Sri Aurobindo. Here it, Aurobindo makes the spirit or Purusha as the source of everything, including Brahman. He makes Purusha more fundamental. Thus, he does not have to say Brahman to be the source of inferior Brahman, and he also dismisses the sense of reality revealed in imaginative and emotional build-up. <laughs> Case of two souls The dualistic school of philosophy initiated by Anandatirtha draws its support from the afore cited passage as well as from the passage of Katha Upanishad I 3.1 of an earlier Upanishad that speaks about two souls which taste the fruits of action, both of which are lodged in the recess of the human heart, and which are different from each other as light and shade, that carried the flaw. How could the universal soul be regarded as enjoying the fruits of action? The followers of Madhava draw their support from the Bhagavad Gita 15.16 that speaks about two persons in this world, the mutable and the immutable. The mutable is all these things, while the immutable is the one who exists at the top of them, one is the Javatman and the other, Paramatman. Javatman is Chit, the sentient, and Paramatman is Isvara, both have the same attributes, they are inseparably present together on the tree which is Achit, the insentient, or the gross avidya component of existence. Javatman and Paramatman are both seated in the heart, the former is driven by the three modes of nature and acts, the latter simply witnesses as though approving the former's activities. The relationship between Paramatma, the universal self, and Atma, the individual self, is likened to the indwelling God and the soul within one's heart. Paramatman is one of the many aspects of Brahman. Paramatman is situated at the core of every individual jiva in the macrocosm. The Upanishads do compare Atman and Paramatman to two birds sitting like friends on the branch of a tree body where the Atman eats its fruits karma, and the Paramatman only observes the Atman as a witness of his friend's actions. <inaudible> Advaita In Advaita philosophy, individual souls are called Javatman, and the highest Brahman is called Paramatman. The Javatman and the Paramatman are known to be one and the same when the Javatman attains the true knowledge of the Brahman SKT. Brahmajnana. In the context of Advaita, the word Paramatman is invariably used to refer to Nirguna Brahman, with Ishvara and Bhagavan being terms used to refer to Brahman with qualities, or Saguna Brahman. Brahman and Isvara are not synonymous words, the apparent similarity is on account of similar looking attributes imagined with regard to the impressions these two words activate. According to Advaita, Isvara is Brahman associated with Maya in its excellent aspect, as the empirical reality it is the determinate Brahman, Isvara has no reality apart from Brahman. The Svetasvatara Upanishad developed the conception of a personal god. The Katha Upanishad states that never has any man been able to visualize Paramatman by means of sight, heart, imagination or mind. The Anandamaya Kosha is the Isvara of the Upanishads. Gaudapada called duality Maya, and non-duality, the only reality. Maya is the cosmic nescience that has in it the plurality of subject and object and therefore, Isvara is organically bound with the world. Beyond the prana or Isvara is the state of the infinite limitless Brahman which is why in the Bhagavad Gita 7.24, Krishna tells Arjuna not knowing my unsurpassable and undecaying supreme nature the ignorant believe me to have assumed a finite form through birth, with regard to the cause of samsara, as to where it resides and the means of its removal, Adi Shankara in his Vivekachudamani.49, instructs that the individual self is the paramatman in reality, the association of the individual self with anyana i.e. with avidya, which he terms as anatmabandha, bondage by the anatman or non-atman, makes it to identify itself with gross, subtle and causal bodies and from that arises samsara which is of the form of superimposition of qualities of sukha, dukkha etc., on itself, the atman. Brahma Kumaris According to Brahma Kumaris religion, Paramatma supreme soul is called Shiva, or Shiva Baba. His form is a point of infinitesimal light and his abode is Paramdam or Nirvana. Vaishnavism Paramatman is beyond knowledge and ignorance, devoid of all material attributes 
In Chapter 13 of the Bhagavad Gita, Paramatman is described as Krishna residing in the hearts of all beings and in every atom of matter. He is the overseer and the permitter of their actions. Paramatman is different from five elements pancha mahabuddhas, the senses, mind, pradana and jiva. Vaishnava sects maintain that attaining knowledge of Brahman and identification of Atman with Brahman is an intermediate stage of self-realization, and only bhakti yoga can lead to the next step of Paramatman realization as the indwelling God, ultimately leading up to liberation mukti by God realization. The Visnu or the deity of the quality of goodness in the material world is the Purusa avatara known as Kasarodakasayi Visnu or Paramatma. One. In Bengal, Vaishnava Krishna is viewed as one endowed with his essential Svarupa Shakti, he is Bhagavad in full manifestation endowed with Yivasakti and Mayasakti, he the Paramatman and Brahman. Brahman, Paramatman and Bhagavan are three gradations of the ultimate reality. Time. Time is described in Vedas My Lord, I consider your Lordship to be eternal time, the supreme controller, without beginning and end, the all-pervasive one. Eternal time is the witness of all our actions, good and bad, and thus resultant reactions are destined by him. It is no use saying that we do not know why and for what we are suffering. We may forget the misdeed for which we may suffer at this present moment, but we must remember that Paramatma is our constant companion, and therefore he knows everything, past, present and future. And because the Paramatma feature of Lord Krishna destines all actions and reactions, he is the supreme controller also. Without his sanction not a blade of grass can move. 2. See also Topic References Topic External Links Usage of the term Paramatma in Puranic and Gaudiya Vaishnava literature